operational quality attributes, you will be getting these five parts that is testing, uh, sorry, testability and debuggability and evolvability and portability time to prototype and market and per unit and total cost with all these things come under non-operational quality attributes because these things matter with respect to production of your embedded system but these things won't matter with respect to the functioning of your embedded system that is the main difference between operational and non-operational quality attributes in non-operational quality attributes only external uh, 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 Oh, attributes will matter. External attributes like how or testing, debugging, uh, ev uh, evolving with respect to how it is getting updated or all those things, portability from one device to another device, how it is uh, transferable and time to prototype. At uh, What is the time which is provided for the preparation of prototype and how when we have to uh, send it to the market and per unit and total cost now, with respect to the product production, one by one, we'll see testability and debuggability. Testability deals with how easily one can test his or her design and application and by which means he, uh, he or she can test it. Testability is, as I told you, how we can test the design or application or the function of your whole uh, embedded system that we will see in the testability and for an embedded product testability is applicable to both the embedded hardware and firmware both we can test hardware also you can test hardware connectivity and uh, what all the chips are there how it is interconnected all those things we can test as an embedded hardware if you are going for embedded firmware how the software debugging or uh, errors in, in uh, is there any errors in the software or anything that we can also test that's why two type of uh, tests we can do with respect to hardware and with respect to firmware embedded hardware testing ensures that the peripherals and the total hardware functioning functions in the desired manner whereas firmware testing ensures that the firmware is functioning in the expected way or not hardware as i told you connections with respect to peripherals or other chips or uh, with respect to the design is it pro properly working or not that is with respect to hardware if you are going with respect to firmware the firmware or a software is functioning as uh, we have expected in the way it has to function okay debuggability means the uh, means of debugging the product as such uh, for figuring out the pro probable sources that create unexpected behavior in the total system. Uh, whenever we are uh, debugging, you will be finding out what all the unexpected behaviors are there, unexpected problems are getting into your system. All those things we have to check with respect to debuggability. Debuggability has two aspects in the embedded system development context, namely hardware level debugging, software level debugging. Both we can see that is firmware or uh, software. Hardware debugging is used for figuring out the issues creating, uh, created by the hardware problems, whereas firmware debugging employs the figure out the prob uh, probable errors that appear as a result of flaws in the firmware. Before implementing only, you can verify with respect or you can debug the hardware and firmware. Both things, we can do that. Whenever uh, the connections are done, is there any problems with respect to hardware? If you are going with respect to firmware, is it is there any errors in the uh, program which may lead to the problem in the uh, further run that you can see with respect to debuggability? If you are going with the evolvability is referred for non-heritable version in biology. That is for an embedded system, the quality attributes, uh, attribute evaluability, uh, evolvability refers to the ease with which the embedded product including a firmware hardware can be modified to take advantage of new firmware or hardware technology see already one in embedded system is generated but with respect to the evol uh, evolution or with respect to the technology revolution with respect to that how we can change the firmware or how we can modify the hardware 
with respect to the new updation that you have to see with respect to evolvability how much amount of percentage we can do with respect to changes in firmware or changes in hardware that comes under evolvability portability is the uh, measure of system independence that is uh, whole uh, chip embedded system chip you have generated how independent this device is if you are connecting this to the main product or if you are connecting this to the main uh, uh, application in the industry how if you are removing that one and if you are connecting to the some other device or some other industrial application the how independently it is able to work with respect to both environments that you can take it as a portability an embedded product is said to be portable if the product is capable of functioning as such in various environments target processor or controller and embedded operating system with respect to that see with respect to different environments if, if it is performing properly then it is a portable device properly 100 percent portable device a standard embedded product should always be flexible and portable and in embedded products uh, the term porting uh, represents the migration of the embedded firmware written for one target processor to different target processors okay with respect to any different processors also it should work that is from one uh, firmware format to the another format also and if the firmware is written in high level language like c it is very easy to port the firmware because if it is uh, written in the c programming it can be run in any type of the hardware for any type of the processor for that reason it will be easy for us to port from one device to another device uh, it is only few target processor specific functions which can be replaced with the ones with the new target processors and recompiling the program for the new target processor specific settings with respect to different type of uh, target processors we can see we can re do, do the recompiling with respect to new target processor also the program then needs to be recompiled to generate the new target processor specific machine codes see uh, whenever you are changing the device you are porting the device then you have to recompile the program and generate the new target processor and specific machine codes if firmware is written in assembly language for a particular family or a processor with respect to uh, 86 family uh, the portability is very poor if you are going with respect to assembly level languages then if you are changing or connecting to the different type of hardware then it will be very hard for us to port it with respect to assembly level language if you are going for high level language like c which can be compiled in any type of processor for that reason if you are going with respect to high level language with respect to c programming then it is useful with respect to the porting and it is very difficult to translate the assembly language instruction to the new target processor specific language See, uh, uh, restricting my embedded system with respect to the uh, microcontroller but you are next porting it to with respect to the some other uh, language like uh, um, uh, if i'm taking a uh, uh, sorry a hardware description language like vlsi languages if you are porting from microcontroller to uh, vlsi uh, uh, the verilog language then it is very difficult to convert it from the microcontroller language to the verilog, verilog language that's why the portability will be very difficult with respect to assembly language if i am going with respect to c you can write c programming in microcontroller also if you can write c programming in verilog also for that reason portability will be easier with respect to the firmware if you are using high level language that is the main thing time to prototype and market that is yeah that should be time to market is the time uh, elapsed between the uh, concept actualization of the product and time at which the product is ready for selling for commercial product or uh, use for non-commercial products that is time to market how much amount of time we are taking to uh, generate your product and uh, sell it pro sell your product in generation you will be having an idea idea related to the product at the time of idea means uh, when you started your idea with respect to the product and when you are started selling your product 
the time gap between the idea towards the selling is called as time to market the commercial embedded product market is highly competitive and time to market and product is critical factor in the pro success of commercial embedded product always it is a critical part with respect to success or a commercial embedded product see competitor might release their product before you do that is also a problem and technology used might have suspended with the new technology whatever the technology we have used that might have been suspended with respect to the uh, with the new technology see you have started your idea or you wanted to implement those products all when you are doing that implementation if you are taking more than one year or two year for the implementation only the new technology will come into place then you are uh, whatever the implementation you are doing that will become a old one for that reason it may get suspended with respect to the new technology that's why always the time to market should be very less uh, time then only you can get a success with respect to the market that is related to time to market see product uh, prototyping uh, plays a lot in uh, reducing the time to market because if you are creating the prototype and checking with respect to all the aspects or functions then uh, you will be having one uh, proper image with respect to the product you, you in pro, on prototype you can do all the testing or all, all the operational functions if any problem occurs then the changes on the prototype can be done and then uh, fully functioning prototype if you are getting then directly you can go for the mass production okay prototyping is an uh, informal kind of rapid product development in which the important features of the product under considerations are developed and the time to prototype is also another critical factor that is uh, if the prototype is uh, developed faster the actual estimated development time can be brought down significantly see whatever the production time is there that you can reduce it if you are producing the prototype if the prototype is developed properly and it is functioning properly then automatically you can go for the bulk production and then you can sell it that's why the prototypes will reduce the significant time with respect to the time to market in order to shorten the time to prototype make use of all possible options like the use of off shelf components and reusable assets see off shelf components like your arduino board will be available your microcontroller board will be available those uh, boards you can use as a off shelf components and you can simply interconnect with respect to external devices and you can get the result that is related to uh, to reduce the time with respect to time to prototype you can directly use the off shelf component per unit uh, cost and revenue with respect to this uh, the cost is a factor which is closely monitored by both end users and product manufacturers that is related to cost uh, cost is highly sensitive factor with respect to commercial products any failure to position the cost of the commercial product at a nominal rate may lead to the failure of the product in the market see if already one i am taking an example with respect to washing machine if i am taking if uh, uh, the high end products are of cost of 30 to 40k if i am taking an example simple example uh, 30 to 40k but with the same features you are costing you are giving the cost of more than 50k then you will get a failure because the same features you are getting in a some other brand with the same lesser amount of cost that's why always maintaining with respect to the cost is also a main part with respect to commercial products any failure to position the cost of a commercial product at a nominal rate may lead to the failure of the product in the market proper market study and cost benefit analysis should be carried out before taking the decision on the per unit cost of the embedded system before implementing or before selling it or before deciding the cost always you have to do the uh, proper analysis with respect to the each and every product with the same uh, specifications the budget and total system cost should be probably balanced to provide the marginal profit without profit you can't get the um, uh, product into market always you should consider with respect to your uh, 
uh, uh, this um, marginal profit and also you should consider with respect to the market uh, study and uh, you have to find out the proper cost which is available with respect to the products okay and the product life cycle of every embedded should uh, so product have different phases with respect to that uh, first is design and development phase where the product idea generation prototyping roadmap definition actual product design and development are the activities carried out during this phase at the development and design phase you will be having the idea generation prototyping roadmap definition and actual product design and development uh, are will be done in this phase and these are uh, only investment and known returns because at this time you will be preparing the prototypes and all all these things how much amount of time it will take how much amount of money it will take these are the investments you won't get any profit with respect to this type of phase next is product introduction phase that is once the product is ready to sell it is introduced to the market during the initial period of the sales the revenue will be very low and uh, there won't be much competition and the product sales and revenue increases with time if you don't have much uh, competitions and all then uh, with respect to time the revenue will also increase and uh, growth phase the product uh, grabs high market phase uh, shares with respect to the uh, time and maturity phase the growth and sales will be steady and the revenue uh, reaches at its peak means whatever the amount of money you have invested uh, with respect to the product all the investment you have taken it back with respect to the sales and also profit you have reached to the highest peak that is the actual phase where the maturity phase of the product has been reached product retirement and uh, decline phase drop in the sales volume and market shares and revenue the deadline uh, decline happens due to the various reasons like competition from the similar products with the enhanced features or technology changes see as the technology changes occurs you have to upgrade your product if you are not doing it it may reach to the product retirement or decline phase uh, some other product or some other brands or some other company will be uh, enhancing their uh, uh, product features and they will be selling the new products then your uh, product will definitely go to the retirement or decline it's stage at some point of time uh, some time uh, point of the decline stage the manufacturer announces the discontinuing of the product that is related to uh, the product life cycles you can see the graph related to product life cycle that is the different stages of the embedded uh, product life cycle revenue uh, and uh, unit cost and profit in each stage of the representation of the following product life cycle you can see that profit at the product development stage it will be nil and product introduction it will be nil or uh, you will be uh, in investing the money with respect to that and growth in the profit will be uh, here and product maturity at that time you will be in the high level of profit after that you will go on reducing it as and when product maturity is reached profit will be in the actual uh, standard stage and product retirement as the profit goes on uh, towards the zero level then product retirement time is came and unit cost at the product production time it will be nominal and as the growth increases growth with respect to revenue increases the cost will be reduced can cost can be reduced product maturity if it is reached then you can reduce the cost and product retirement at the time of retirement also if you want to uh, uh, get rid of all the remaining products then you will reduce the cost of the product still more at the product retirement stage and if you are going for the product sales at the time of product development you can't do any sales that's why zero here if you are going for product interaction time only less amount of products will be uh, sent to the market means 100 or hundreds or 200 count will be sent at the time of growth you will be doing a good amount of say product sales and at the time of product materials maturity also you will reach to the peak of the product sales 
at the time of product retirement you will be going with respect to reduction in the product sales then we will go to retirement next we have non operational quality attributes that is from the graph it is clear that the total revenue increases with the product uh, introduction stage to the product maturity stage the same thing i have explained here with the graph only uh, the revenue peaks at the maturity stage and starts falling in the decline and retirement stage the unit cost is very high during the intro introductory stage for example of uh, uh, if you are taking the cell phones if you buy a new model of the cell phone during the its launch time the price will be high and you will get the same model with a very reduced price after 3 or 4 months of its launching launching because at that time they wanted to end uh, they will be ending their product that's why you can see the cost difference there the profit increases with the increase in the sales and attains the steady uh, value and then falls with the dip in sales and you can see the negative value for profit during the initial period and it it is used uh, it is because uh, during the product development phase there is only investment and no returns okay. Okay. and profit occurs only when the total returns exceeds the investment and operating cost next we can see embedded system applications and domain specific one by one examples we can see washing machine application specific embedded system washing machine is also one of the application specific embedded system see washing machine is a typical example of an embedded system providing the extensive support in the home automation application it is related to home automation system an embedded system contains sensors actuators control unit and application specific user interface like keyboard and display units etc all these components can be seen in the washing machines you can see here you will be having a level sensor to verify that the overflow of the water should not be there and water uh, inlet pipe is there water outlet pipe is there body case will be there and inner tub outer tub will be provided and temperature sensor if you have a uh, variations of uh, temperature can be controlled in your uh, washing machine then temperature sensor is included integrated control panel for with uh, user interface and that is will be uh, with a led led display and you will be having user interfaces like keypad with the start light medium heavy wash and soak or rinse with respect to time all those things will be present in your washing machine you yeah. i think everyone has the washing machine in your in your home please go and check what all the input components are there what all the sensors may be available all those things you can identify by seeing or using those things okay if they are asking related to washing machine you have to draw this diagram and explain the proper uh, explanation with respect to that application specific embedded system see the actuator part of the washing machine contains of uh, consist of the uh, motorized agitator and uh, tumble tub water drawing uh, pump and inlet valve to control the flow of water into the unit that is with respect to actuator part and the sensor part consists of water temperature sensor and level sensor etc the control part consists of microprocessor or controller based board with interfaces to sensors and actuators with respect to uh, sensors and actuators you will be seeing with respect to what all the uh, interfaces are there the sensor data is fed back to the control unit and control unit generates the necessary actuator outputs see if i am giving the input with respect to the sensor uh, with respect to control unit or else if you are taking the sensor data towards the control unit with respect to that control unit will generate the uh, actuator outputs like see as and when it reaches to the water level water level has been checking with respect to the maximum water level has been taken care after that 
what where it should go after filling the proper uh, water level then it will go for next rotation of the tub uh, that rotation will takes place after reaching the proper level of water that is the sensor with respect to actuation the control unit also provides connectivity to user interfaces like keypad for setting the washing machine washing time and selecting the type of material to be washed like light medium or heavy duty etc and user feedback is uh, reflected through the display unit and led is connected to the control board you can see two type of uh, washing machines top load and front load washing machines and washing machine comes in two models that is top and front the top mo loading models are agitator of the machine twist back and front and pulls the cloth down to the bottom of the tub that is with respect to top load on reaching the bottom of the tub the cloths work uh, their way back to the top and tub uh, and off the tub where the agitator grabs them again and repeats the mechanism in the front loading mechanism the cloths are tumbled and plugged Uh, plugged into the water or over and over again and this is the first phase of washing that is with respect to top load and front load the second phase of washing is water is pumped out from the tub and the uh, inner tub uses uh, centrifugal force to uh, bring out more water from the cloth by spinning at several hundred rotation per minute rpm 100 rotation per minutes more than 100 rotations per minute minute if you are rotating it will squeeze the cloths and remove the water from the cloth and it will uh, uh, remove the water from the tub also and it, this is called as spin phase the inner tub of the machine contains the number of holes and during the spin cycle the inner tub spins and forces the uh, water out through uh, these holes at the stationary outer tub from which it is uh, drained out through the outlet pipe you will be having the holes you can see here holes in the tubs will be there which will uh, take out the water and it will pull out the from uh, water outlet outlet okay and the design of washing machine may vary from manufacturer to manufacturer but the general principle underlying in the working of washing machine remains the same turbine rotation everything will be same only with respect to different uh, brands also but only small changes with respect to specifications and all will be there and the basic control consists of timer uh, and cycle selector machine water temperature selector and load size selector and start button these are the control consist uh, with respect to uh, controls uh, provided with respect to washing machine Uh, the mechanism includes the motor transmission clutches and uh, pump agitator and uh, inner tub outer tub and water inlet valves these are the mechanism with respect to your uh, washing machine water inlet valve connects the water supply line using at home and uh, uh, regulator uh, regulates the flow of water into the tub that is with respect to water inlet valve okay okay i think well that they are on right you can see here uh, the control panel as you have seen in your home also you can verify that with respect to different type of brands it will be different okay don't worry that you won't be having these many control options no you know, with respect to different brands the control operation options will also change here you can see that soak option wash option and uh, rinse or spin option and uh, express wash with respect to that and daily wash options are there these are already programmed one if you are clicking on that with respect to time with respect to type of the cloth it will directly wash it and water levels with respect to auto low water level you want medium high or very high water level you want that you can see and uh, okay you will tell you softener of the water see hard water if you are having it can soften the water and it will help us to verify uh, wash the cloth properly softening it and 
uh, ultra clean option is the that is uh, winter cloths hot cloths or uh, germ free cloths uh, work, washing will is also available and here p1 daily programs different type of programs are there you can select any one of these to wash it properly no need to go for many options here if you are selecting this day p1 if you are selecting daily wear products are there uh, daily wear cloths are there means they won't be much dirty then easily you can wash it with, a, with less amount of time then if you are going for p2 heavy the integrated control panel consists of microprocessor control board with io interfaces and control algorithm running on it see uh, the panel will be having input keyboards in different way it doesn't mean you should have all the keyboards in the same format okay now with respect to the application they have changed their uh, keyboard interfaces uh, and you will be having microprocessor controller uh, board and input interface includes the keyboard which consists of washing type selector normally wash pin or rinse and cloth type selector like light medium or heavy duty or washing time settings etc will be there and water level selectors with are there the output interface consists of led lcd display status indicates that leds etc indicated uh, to the io bus of the controllers means uh, led or uh, lcd display will show that how much amount of time it was taking and how much amount of time it is doing the rinse operation all those things you can see there the other type of io interfaces which are uh, invisible to the end user are different kinds of sensor interfaces different kinds of sensor interfaces you can see there and namely water temperature sensor water level sensor etc will be there and the actuator interfaces includes motor control uh, for the agitator and tub movement control and inlet water uh, flow control all these things are actuators the major application domain of embedded system or consumer industrial automotive and telecommunication etc telecom and automotive industry holds the big market share with respect to this um, application domain specific uh, embedded system figure below gives an overview of various types of electronic control units embedded uh, automotive applications are there you can see here if i am going with respect to automotive uh, embedded systems normally you will think that uh, the automatic uh, automotive systems or automotive uh, devices are related to mechanical but normally more than uh, 30 to 40 percent you will be having electronic devices all those things you can see here uh, you will be having engine control flow of uh, uh, the uh, petrol everything is controlled with respect to your electronic devices instrumentation uh, engine control fan control and you will be having fuel injection control headlamp control and abs and you will be having wiper control and uh, suspension control you will be having centralized locking system that is also uh, with respect to electronic device uh, power windows and uh, mirror control and if you are getting seat controls and uh, airbag control power uh, power steering air conditioning these are the basic things which are uh, with respect to domain specific embedded system and uh, with respect to this you can see many more uh, are there if you are going for automated uh, cars or electronic cars normally it will be more than this you can control many things like uh, controlling the movement of the car everything is dependent on the electronic embedded system devices only embedded system are the one where electronics take control over the mechanical systems means electronic devices are controlling the mechanical system the presence of automotive embedded system in a vehicle varies from simple mirror and wiper control to the complex airbag control and anti lock brake system Uh, anti lock brake system uh, that is abs system all these things are mechanical devices but controlled by the electronic devices that is that's why it is called as uh, electronic uh, controlling the mechanical system and automotive uh, embedded systems are normally built around microcontrollers or dsps or a hybrid of two and are generally known as a electronic control units ecu 
and number of embedded controllers in the ordinary vehicle varies from 20 to 40 whereas in luxury uh, vehicles like mercedes s and bmw 7 may contains 75 to 100 number of embedded controllers because it will be having more number of electronic devices to uh, provide the ease towards the drivers and uh, customers